Welcome to Uncaged, the show that celebrates thought leadership from today's top business leaders. The program provides a voice to amazing executives from around the globe who are shaping the world of business today and mapping the path to the commerce of tomorrow. Today, we're speaking with David Louvet. Hey, David, how are you? Hi, Brent. I'm very good. Thank you. David is the COO and CHRO at Universelles, a fast-growing global life sciences group that addresses the needs of the entire health value chain by delivering novel biomanufacturing platforms and solutions, aiming at making biologics available and affordable to all. Uh, David, I'm excited to learn more about what you guys are working on at Universelles. But before we get there, tell us a little bit about yourself and your career. Um, well, my, my career is, is, is started probably as a very typical uh, HR progressive career going from recruitment to HR management. And, and actually, my first step in HR, because I'm originally an HR person, um, was like... Was kind of has some similarities but with what I'm doing today. Um, uh, joining a, a group of Belgian companies at the time that were like pioneers of the internet um, in Belgium and, and cool. a group of startups. And let's say 20 years later, I mean, 15, 20 years later, I'm back in, in, in a different story in the life science world, but it's kind of the same story. Um, in between, um, you know, I, I grew in, in, in the typical HR roles, uh, heading in different companies, actually not in the life science, in, in finance, in, in, in retail credit, actually, uh, for one, uh, and then in insurance. And then when you start looking at, at your career at one time and you, you see a succession of projects um, and you do two years this and you grew up in that, you touch up a little bit in operations, um, I, I like literally... 11 years ago, uh, I, I made the step to say, okay, I'm going to try something different. I'm going to go to interim management, go to, uh, to consulting and, you know, start up on my own and, and did a, a, a good number of gigs uh, with very different clients in HR, but also uh, discovering uh, new worlds like public sector in Belgium, uh, working also internationally with some technology group in France, in Morocco. So that was, that was very interesting. And um, I actually look at that period um, as not um, just a career change, not a transition, but also a resourcing moment. A resourcing, right. you work a lot in consulting, but you're also, um, you know, um, probably more than, than when you're sitting in company, uh, you have to uh, bring more best practice. You have to help your clients grow um, and, and, and develop their systems and their practices and as a consultant or interim manager, you're, you have to be permanently on top of your game. So that's, um, yeah. and, and also you see different things, you see different companies, different uh, organizations, and, and you learn from that at the same time. And we'll come back on the learning. And yeah. then- No, I mean, I, I find it really interesting. And I, I mean, I look at your background, a lot of work in the human resources space, mm -hmm. for sure. And obviously now the shift into... Uh, an operating officer uh, role. And I think that that's a really interesting thing uh, because you know, talent and managing talent has become so critical to not only just kind of like uh, an aspect of the business, but to every aspect of the business. So in some ways it makes a complete sense. And I'd really love to learn more about what you guys are working on now at Universelles. Yeah, so, um, well, Telling my telling the story of universals and 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 my and mine are kind of related because I think I was the number seven in the company. So, oh wow! Uh, Congratulations! And, and, and we're we're going to reach four hundred in in a couple of days. So that's 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 the crazy thing. Uh, what are we doing at Universals? Um, we're kind of like changing the world. Uh, okay, it's very ambitious one. Um, but uh, we decided, I mean, we, we, we found very early on, and that's the basics that the founders brought uh, in the company, um, that one way or another, the, the, the biologics talk about vaccines, uh, antibodies, so um, you know, drugs at the end, were not always available for everyone, um, and mostly for a question of price price dictated by market, but also by the infrastructure, the, 
the manufacturing process uh, or the equipment to uh, so the cost of producing uh, that dictate that price and that lots of people in the world and not only children but you know people in, in low and middle income countries for example were didn't simply didn't have access to the, to these drugs or very limited access because they simply can't afford it um, so at universals we called ourselves change makers um, we are really reinventing the bioprocess, the biomanufacturing, um, and in different different aspects. I mean, after um, seven years uh, of operating uh, the company, you know, with uh, calling operating with employees and 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 and, and growing the, the business, we are now developed in a group, like you mentioned originally. Um, mm -hmm. With we have different activities. We develop equipment, so we we develop uh, assemble commercialize equipment that uh, create, uh, that allow producers, but also, uh, I mean, yeah, uh, biologics producers to reduce their footprints, to reduce their um, uh, their uh, their investments in, in equipment and produce more for cheaper. Uh, that, that, that's, the, that's the idea. That's uh, great. It sounds like it's, I, I can see that it's supported by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and a ton of other groups that, uh, I think everyone in the world knows at this point are very active in trying to bring these types of uh, affordable solutions to developing markets. So tell me more about how, how the products get to these markets and is everything done there or, you know, where is this structure? Well, today Universals is Belgian based. Uh, mostly we, we, we have a couple of colleagues in the US, a couple of ones in, in Asia. Uh, more mostly for for commercial purpose. Um, we like to say that we are Belgian based, but we don't have customers in Belgium. That's kind of funny. Uh, our customers are all over, all over the world, and they are they are different. I mean, some of our customers as a group are uh, other manuf I mean manufacturing uh, businesses that that manufacture biologics, but we also have customers that come to us to use our facilities. Um, we we were just finishing setting up a full manufacturing site in Belgium using our technology, obviously. Um, but also uh, we are developing uh, projects with low and middle income countries to install uh, manufacturing capabilities, for example, in Senegal to build, to use our experience, what we did in Belgium and build uh, for customers. That, that could be a government also, that it could be a private and public partnership. Uh, to build uh, these facilities in uh, in low and middle income countries uh, and design them, build them, operate them, and then transfer. So that's that's, that's what amazing. we do. And yeah, we're. I mean, I was saying. I just said we were only four hundred people, but with a global reach today. Yeah, I can see that. And certainly, if you're building out stuff in Senegal, that is that is going to be uh, a game changing moment for for what your work is, it, what you guys are working on. So, I mean, tell me a little bit more about the impact of Universelles and, and what you guys are seeing in the broader market right now for life sciences and where you guys play in that market. Well, um, you mentioned it. Everybody's looking at affordability today. I was reading, um, you know, the, the, the COP26 is going on and I was reading a comment this morning online uh, saying that if we ignore emerging countries or not actually that emerging countries are there to remind us that in, you know we need to win all together and mm -hmm. this is really what we want to do at, at universals we're able to respond to these needs and covid for example uh, the, 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 the pandemic demonstrated that in terms of production capabilities manufacturing side we were we had shortage most of the big pharma uh, and, and and the vaccine producers had to select and reduce some uh, of their other productions to be able to, to, pro to produce and, and provide enough uh, COVID vaccines. So uh, today we see that not only in emerging countries, but also in, in, in developed countries in the US, for example, where lots of initiatives are coming about ready, pan pandemic readiness and, and increasing the capability to produce more and more. And there, if you come, as universal with less investment uh, needs, uh, lower footprint, uh, more environmentally uh, uh, friendly uh, solutions. Well, you're talking. You're talking to the business because that's that's what 
they want and also the speed to deploy solutions. Yeah, I mean, it, it's so critical. I know that as we think about the next phase on the pandemic and how we make sure that the vaccines are distributed everywhere in the world, the cost effectiveness of those vaccines is going to be of critical importance and kind of sets up my next question for you. I mean, over the last 18 months, we've been living through this moment, this lovely pandemic moment. Mm -hmm. And I'd just be curious to hear what how that's impacted Universelles and the work that you're doing and perhaps offered opportunities? Um, impacted, I think, in the positive way. I mean, we didn't, uh, we didn't stop. Um, we, I mean, if I just look with my HRIs, we kept hiring people. We were you know, onboarding 20 people a month, even during full lockdown in Belgium. So that tells wow. you we, we, we did not stop. And actually, for the company internally, it was a challenge, but we adapted very fast. We're still a scale up, so you know mentality and uh, and and people are still very agile. So it, it that was that was kind of easy. Uh, uh, on the positive impact, I think uh, COVID brought a lot of opportunities. Um, if we if we look um, at one time, we were in discussion with probably fifteen different partners looking at solutions to produce COVID vaccines in Belgium. Mm -hmm. Uh, even to export around the world. And this is where, for example, we uh, decided to set up that uh, an extra uh, manufacturing site in Belgium. Uh, and, and the challenge was to do it very quickly. It's, it's mm -hmm. now ready with the capability to produce COVID vaccines, probably not the first wave, but uh, we were talking more of the second wave of vaccines that is coming. No, um, I'm not going to give you names. Obviously, uh, <laughs> <laughs> these are these are little business uh, secrets. Um, but um, we're um, we were also able to demonstrate that we could set up a full manufacturing site in less than 15 months. That's wow. so, and and and. And that in a pandemic context with, you know, home working and all, all these the situations. So, um, you know, you it's mentioned... funny because I think that we always focus the discussion on, on the direct science that uh, is applied to develop the vaccine in the first place, but to scale the vaccine, to actually produce it effectively and efficiently. That is really kind of, I would imagine, the dilemma that we have when we talk about bringing something like that to the developing world. No, I mean, that that seems to be the biggest hurdle, I would imagine. Well, uh, if you look at the vaccination figures today, uh, it's clear that, you know, you and me in the US and Europe, we got our doses, we're fine. You know, we're yep. going to get a third shot maybe. Lots of people didn't get their shots yet, period. Not, not even yeah. their first one. Um, I mean, the vaccination uh, ratios in, in, in Africa are way, 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 way below uh, what, we, what we see in our countries. So the thinking that, oh yeah, it's coming down, it's calming, the, the, we're coming out of the pandemic. Yeah, maybe here, but uh, there are places in the world where it's not the case yet um, yeah. and where the epidemic is still spreading. Um, I would add, I mean, you were met, talking about opportunities. It's also, um, you probably heard in, in, in the technologies that are, these vaccines are based, um, the RNA um, is, is something, the RNA messenger um, is, is, is something that literally emerged through the COVID right. um, as, as a new way of, of developing vaccines. This is something where Universals has already uh, started the developing solutions to produce RNA. Um, it, it literally going back to what we did seven years ago, for cell, uh, cell culture, uh, going back to, okay, let's innovate. What we did in five years, we can probably do it in two because we, you know, we, <laughs> we have the experience. We, 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 we passed the hurdles a couple of times, so we know to do it. And I love those challenges. Oh, when, you know, when we think about like trying to do it in five years, that was probably a huge hurdle. And then you're like, okay, but now, now let's go back and do it in two. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and and if you look at our founders and you know at, at our the, our best innovator uh, in, in the company, uh, Jose Castillo, that's still. I mean, he needed to go back there, and he needed yeah. to be um, okay. There is a new new technology; it's coming, and affordability will be a topic again for RNA. So we should be there too. That's great. 
Well, I mean, we've been talking a lot about what Universe Cells has is doing already, and and certainly I can see some of the stuff that's coming down the path already for you guys. But as you look forward over the next year, two years, what what do you see as the key things that Universe Cells is going to focus on? Well, keep growing. Um, I think um, if you look at our business in, internally, the the, the, the four uh, the four different businesses inside the group, they are at, mat- at totally different maturity levels. Um, some are really maturing, going to commercial mode, uh, getting tra- more than traction in their market, and that that, that totally makes sense. Um, they are they are more smaller, more or less mature business that are growing. And I was just mentioning also some business that are starting starting to innovate again. So mm-hmm. you go back and, and, and start again. Um, I think that the, the, the future for Universals is uh, as a group to be like we do for technologies, be a developer of companies. Um, and we probably will go through a couple of acquisitions and, and grow externally. We, mm-hmm. we are starting again to... Um, have an innovation lab internally. So what can we create? New business, testing new stuff um, because we need to reinvent ourselves constantly. Um, yeah. um, and, and then at the same time, it's uh, if I look you know, with my CEO eyes a little bit more internally, it's uh, sustaining the growth because right. you know, uh, the pace is crazy. It's a roller coaster. It goes fast. Um, we, we're now a global company, we, you know, we have more than uh, 35% of our team is not Belgian. So we have cultures to integrate with people who have to learn to work together. And, you know, referring to your talent management question earlier, it's, 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 it's also important that we know keep the people uh, that join us for the good reasons uh, to keep them motivated, to keep them engaged and, and, and grow with us. Yeah. Which is easy when you grow as universals. Because at the same, there are opportunities create themselves internally for people yeah. who joined two years ago, and they like, oh, a new job. I can, you know, I can grow with the company. So yeah. that's, that's the first part. But it's a yeah. challenge. No, I can see that, and I can see why uh, you are the the man in the position of the COO role right now, as talent and growth are at the forefront and the focus for the business. Uh, David, it's been amazing to hear what Universe Cells is up to. We've been speaking with David Louvet. He is the COO and CHRO of Universe Cells, which is an incredibly important and fast-growing technology group of over 400 collaborators offering novel biomanufacturing platforms to increase the availability and affordability of biologics for all by reinventing process architecture and bringing out the best of technology innovations. Uh, David, if someone wanted to reach out and learn more about what Universe Cells is up to, how can they get in touch with you? Well, we have a website like everyone, um, but um, they can always you know, drop us a mail, um, pick up right. the phone, we're there. Um, we are also present in all these, you know, on, in the conferences. Uh, but a dedicated team is, I mean, we are open to the world. So come knocking the door. That's, That's uh, awesome. Well, well, I mean, uh, clearly Universelles is tackling, I think, probably one of the the biggest challenges that the world faces. And David, you set it up front, which is that you you and your colleagues took on a big, hairy, audacious goal and you've built an incredible company to do that, which is how do we make um, medical solutions? How do we make technology that can help on innovative medical solutions like RNA? How can we make sure that every part of the world benefits from this type of stuff as quickly as possible? Because as we've learned in this pandemic, anything that happens is global these days. And we need to make sure that uh, we can offer truly international solutions. So thank you so much, David. And I look forward to having you back on Uncaged. Thank you, Matt. Have a good day. Bye. Cheers.